So we're going to take a journey now to Bangkok, Thailand to look at the famous Thai amulets of Somnipap Puttajan To from Rangsi Watrakang using an iPhone 5 which isn't very clear but it still allows HD and uh, luckily I have a lens which I'm going to use with this phone to show you close-ups. I'm not going to get all of these amulets in because this came from a Facebook Live and I ran out of power so you get to look at about five amulets in this video and here's the lens and we're going to begin with looking at um, two Somdet Watakang Pimiai one is a Pimgit Jarotsum and the other is a Pimgit Talotsum uh, from what I believe to be from the second era because this video is also about Prat Somdet of Somdet Paputajanto from Rangsi of Watrakang uh, in all his three eras. That in the corner there was just to attract some attention. Uh, some people were interested that is a Chu Chok in handcuffed wood by Rumpu Rod. Anyway, back to Prat Somdet now. And uh, as you can see on the right here, I'm taking my lens. I'm going to put it on the iPhone. You can see on the right the two amulets at the front on the right. We're actually going to look at the bottom four amulets, which you can now see on screen mainly in this video. The two on the right are Pimbyai, Pimpapatan, and the two next to them on the left are Pimchidi. And we're going to talk about the three eras. So this, uh, these two I take to be the, the two on the right, second era. Those are what get to your amulets, some what get to your. This is a span some bank on from from the good gao the chedi yai. This is also a pat som net sendai, same as the pat som net bankum prom sendai next to it, but was released to Vatra Kang. And this is a pat som net pimtukata of som net paputichanto, which not everybody knows. And this is also a pat som net in Nerpun pet, which I will speak about on another day. This is very white in color. As a pim chedi, as you can see, I'm taking the ruler. Uh, if you can take the ruler and make a triangle between the angle of the dais and the center of the Pagit Mala top knot of the Buddha to meet in the center as a triangle, then it's a Pim Chedi, not a Pim Yai. Yeah, that's what I was doing with the ruler. And uh, another day, I was going to look at these, but I didn't make it. Another day uh, to look at those Patnon amulets. The Bank on Pom. Also, something though very old, and the small one to the top right. And this pattern on. It's actually my birthday Buddha born on a Tuesday. You should uh, this Buddha born on a Tuesday uh, to worship this particular. And this I call the Chedi Wake Man, Wake Man, Man. Uh, the Chedi with uh, open curtains, very old. So now we get into the nitty gritty. And we're going to look at this Prat Somdet Pim Yai Gijarot Sum. And you can see it has a bit of lacquer on it. Which with authentic you will not usually see fully lacquered amulet. If it's fully lacquered the whole amulet, there's something to suspect a little bit. Because they used to just lacquer around the body of the Buddha. I'm now putting the lens on so it's going blurry. You'll have to excuse the blurs whilst I prepare. I'm holding the iPhone in one hand, putting the lens on with the other hand and trying to, you can see, just see how much I'm wobbling around here with the macro magnification holding in one hand. So now we can see the surface of the amulet. And you can see this particular amulet is not so obviously full of the Muan San and elements, all of the elements which I like to name and teach about. 
but as you will see later they are present and they're always present in lesser or greater amounts and so as you can see here this has once been lacquered and cleaned up as you can see the lacquer usually they would lacquer and gold leaf around the on the buddha and just around it but not up to the edges of the the actual frame of the amulet which is one mistake fakers make as you can see i'm looking around the edge of the um arch now and trying to get close in to look at the wobbles you can see the bulging and the contraction of the arch as moisture has left the sacred clay over decades and a century and a half or a century of uh, of drying depending on what conditions you can see on the surface of the amulet there's around the buddha in the in what they call the cavities see where my thumb is now you will see like a very fine powder that is the Plugakhoi Beng Pong Putakon um, seashell powder and the five sacred powders, which are very fine. And some ingredients are more rough, so the finer ingredients, powders, get pushed to the surface. As we get close here now, you can see quite a lot of bailan and little particles, black cracks. You can see the fine white powder sheen of the Pruyakai and Bang Bong Buddha Kun. Uh, you see the dace, how it is also contracted. And you can see this fossil, fossilized crackled effect. Yeah. Um, this, uh, I, at first I called Nurkrang because in the naked eye it looks more dry than uh, fossilized stone. You have different appearances because you have three eras. So I call this from the second era, which would be about um, 2370 to 2386, somewhere around there. Don't ask me to remember the exact dates because nobody really knows. And um, you can see under. To our right, the elbow and the knee has a line connecting, you can see now here, between the elbow and the knee. On the right, his, the Buddha's left arm, but the arm to our right. And you can see inside the armpit, the armpit of the Buddha is higher on our right side than the left side. And you should always change the angles. You see I'm switching the, the amulet around at different angles. That is because of the shadow being thrown you look at the armpits the one on our right side goes higher and more deeper upwards than the one on the left side so the Buddha's left armpit is higher than his right or the one on our right is higher than the one on the left and you can see in the head that the Paget Mala doesn't pierce the arch so it's a Jarotsum and here on the edge we can see lots of particles of crystalline substances, wan, little bits of different colored items, yeah. This one's quite yellowy, although with artificial light you'll see it change tone and color as I move it around in the light, so it's hard to represent. You see in the corner this little white crystal, in Zilati Kun there on the corner there, yeah. And the little red dots is pieces of Gamping Pet practical amulets with some 700 to 1000 year old amulets. I like to look at the corners like this. Here I found a piece of Munsan. It helps you. And here you can see inside also a piece of crystalline Hinsi Latikun. Yeah. And if you can see how the edges, the, apart from looking at the particles of Munsan, of which at this distance of magnification you can see but this is one that doesn't have a very high content of all the different ingredients so you'd have to really magnify to find them I can see little red pieces, black pieces, white pieces, grey pieces yeah I see even the gold flags which I'm sure you can't see most people well, here on the back we can see notice the uneven tonality of the back amulets that are completely even of this age practical amulets and old amulets when the crab group on the or the crab, the mildew on the back is all the same tonality, it's usually something to suspect because it should be of different 
tonalities in different places so you can see here on some places it's more brownish then it goes white then it's dark and black mm, there's that piece of Hinsi Latikun in the corner again and now I'm coming in close in you can see it looks shiny that's the light shining on it but that's because it's actually it wasn't as powdery dry as I first said because when you take it look it under the eye loop you see it's more like a fossilized stone it's so condensed over the ages yeah and you can see it looks like topography you can see lakes and rivers and mountains in there just look at this here look at the surface and you can see the patterns the substances inside uh, the little cracks with uh, black that's bylan powders you might see a black shiny piece which would be a piece of um, uh, a banana seed sometimes you see a piece and sometimes you see a shiny black piece that is patad like lai because it comes from the red ancient earthen 700 to 1000 year old camping pet amulets you can see on the bottom right corner of the screen they're just leaving the screen there was a piece of hinsi latikun you missed it and so there you go hinsi latikun but if you look at the natural aging of this and just look how hardened how the moisture has left the amulet and it's just become like a domino really if you tap it on the table it sounds like a domino and here now closing in you can see the different tonalities in the surface you can see the lacquer totally affixed if you notice between the knee and the elbow of the arm to our right there is a piece of robe like a strip connecting and look at I'm pointing now at the tip of our instrument to show the higher armpit that it's higher and I'm turning it around because you have to get the light into where the shadows fall so that you can see every angle if not you might not actually see the point of recognition of authentication that this armpit must be higher on one side than the other because it's throwing shadow and so that's why I'm turning it around so that you can see more clearly that this armpit is higher than this armpit the, the one to our right is higher than the one to our left I'm very sorry about the unstable camera movement but magnifying at 15 times like this is pretty hard to um, stay still the slightest little movement so I've taken the lens off so you can see the whole Ong, the whole Buddha, the whole amulet again. And now we're looking at another one. You can see it has a more grayish beige tone to this one, which looks more yellowish. But don't forget artificial light. And look at the edge here without magnification. You can see it has some fossilization and a lot of contraction. You can see ridges. Uh, you have to look very carefully to see knife marks and this is a Pim Luang Wijan, Chang Luang Wijan from the second era so sometime between 27, uh, 247, 248 plus BE 2480 BE around that time yeah already very old and beginning to have that fossilized effect the last era was around 2408 sometime around that time 2406, 2408, I can't remember. Don't ask me to remember. I'm terrible with dates, and that's when I, the only time I need a book as a reference. Yeah. So, um, that's a part of the Bangkok prom, which I'm just showing. As I was, this is from a Facebook Live, as I said, this video, which turned out to have no sound, so I decided to remake it into another video with a narrative, and I was really mad. And this was telling people, just in case you're wondering what this is, this is a off-topic uh, hand carved Chu Chok Chu Chaka Lucky Baker statuette from Lumpur Road at Wat Bangamon. 
อนิวายไปถือพระสมเด็จพระราชังเอ่อ this is the other one this is a pimgate t a l u s o m if you look at the pagate mala top knot the spike the spire in the top of the head it pierces the arch it pierces the arch whereas the other model does not it bumps into the arch it's called jarot s o m the first one where the pagate mala which means the spire on the top of his head And you see, the back of this one has a much, much more. I call this cat mark. Uh, you have different kinds of rear faces. You have lang mai gada, lang g a p mark, lang lang means behind. So lang g a p mark, lang mai lai gada, lang ni, lang nun. Yeah, you have different kind of backs, and each one has its own special name for what kind of back. As you can see now, this one looks. Uh, hang, that it looks dry and powdery, but it isn't. When you get close in, it's actually c r a n k It's stony and fossilized, and it's also secondary. And you can see the piercing through the arch of the top knot. The line going up from the head pierces right through the arch. To the left of that, you saw a little crystal. And look at the arch, how it's wobbly and bulges. Yeah. Because of the contraction of the removal of uh, of the evaporation of moisture, here in the second days you can see a piece of crystal. You notice uh, the little fine little black cracks within the surface. b y l a n d powders again. The bottom, um, the second. Part of the days, as you can see, is more angled on the left side than the right side. In this pim, it's a changlong w i j a n which you will notice that the the arch on the right side actually hits the edge of the amulet, whereas the arch on the left side leaves a bit of extra space between the arch and the edge of the amulet. Yeah, outside the arch, the square frame. We we'll call it the frame. Well, as you can see, between the elbow and the knee. This line, that's a piece of Jivara robe, with the pimyai should be connecting between the elbow and the knee, on the right side. And look at this is very stony effect. This also very stony. This one's more yellowy because of a higher presence of tang oil. Yeah, it's also a different block press. It's the pim j a r o t s u m Yeah, whereas the other one is a pim k e t a l u t s u m Yeah, from the tang sip mo. Uh, there was a various number of artisans. This was the first one we looked at, which we're looking at now. We're seeing the edge. I was trying to get more stable to see the edges, and then compare with the edge of this one, which, as you can see, you can actually see a, a lot more contraction. Now, this has a more, much more, very fine crackled effect. If you look on the edge left here, you can see something inside the art. A piece of crystalline substance on the knee to the right of the screen. Also, a piece of hinsi lati kun. Here we also see some kind of w a h n o t maybe kosan. You don't know. He made so many ingredients. I know about 20. That's a piece of hinsi lati kun. You can see the small little crystal pieces in the like pieces of red stuff, black stuff. Orangey red. That's the earthen clay from the ancient g r o u amulets that s o m e t o the Prat g a m p i n g pit hiding place amulets, 700 to 1,000 years old. He ground them up, the broken or not beautiful ones, to mix in, and that's why you sometimes see a piece of red clay. Yeah, look on the edge here. You can see these angled lines where where the the holes, the caves in the edge. It's from the knife cuts because it's not pressed with modern machine pressing. As you can see here, the lines of the dice. You look very close up. Can you see the little pieces of different substances, the crystalline white chunks in there? You look at the hands. They're actually joined together into one hand. But if you look really carefully. With a perfect pim, you will see a slight suggestion of folded hands. Here you see in the he uh, head and the chest. You can see the hinsi latikun crystal inside. 
the middle of the face, which is like a matchstick head. This opaloid matchstick head kind of look is classic Pratsumdip Patrakang and Geche Yo. Uh, I can see these the Bailan powders in the crackled effect. I can see this slight wobble. Did you see on the spire on top of his head there's a slight wobble? A slight kind of undulation. Uh, here you can see in these cavities. Here we don't see the white powder so much because I'm so close up the light is obscuring it. Which we could see at a further distance before. And now looking at the back, a nice piece of Hin Silati Kun. And this is denser clay. Let's look at the particles. Here you can see the angular, can you see the angular knife slits? A cutter, you know a cutter? The cutter. You know the cutter, a carpet cutter, carpet knife. That's what you can use. And you'll see the marks of that. You see the ang that how it has contracted. You see these angular lines going from top left to bottom right, just to the left of the screen a second ago. And now they're going the other way. Now they're going from top right to bottom left. Yeah? And it's when they pull them out of the block press. Look at the contractions and the caves in here. The piece of crystal on the corner. You can't fake this kind of natural aging process of, of, of evaporation and contraction of the ingredients of the sacred clay and, and how the rough, uh, rougher, bigger pieces, bigger particle type substances stay within and then the finer ground particles rise to the surface. Look at that beautiful piece of Hinsilati Kun, for Hinsilati Kun, for example. Uh, and this crab, uh, you can see this orangey crab. Which I call Gatman, but uh, actually, traditional Gatman is a different kind of bag. But uh, Mang means beetle nut, which is reddish. You can see tiny little ready orangey particles they will be uh, residues from the Pratt Gumpeng pit uh, if you're looking closer you can start to see look at this it's like a Martian landscape the topology topography can you see these crackled effects that like mountains it looks like the Grand Canyon from space right can you see or a broken uh, foam when the bubbles break and cave in, it's like caved in bubbles, which means craters, of course. So this looks like a lunar surface. Can you see how hard and fossilized this effect is? And look at this black, shiny, just going out below screen. Get it back in the screen if I can. In the center there, there you see the black, shiny piece. That's either a piece of koi nam wa banana seed or it's a piece of patadlik life from the Pratt Gumping pet amulets he mixed in which he learned to mix in with his Krubajan Somnitto mixed in with Kruba Sang Prajan Sang so at the Wicha they made the Wicha together for powders for Prat Somdet Wajakang and also Prat Wat Prap and here you can see next to the Hinsi Latikun a red piece can see pieces of red as the ancient camping pit amulets. Uh, the black crackles will be pieces, will be bilan powders. There's a banana seed again, or patad, hard to say. But you just see how at a distance it looked like dry and powdery, and how under the eye loop, magnifying it like this. Now you see dry and, looks dry and powdery and smooth and as soon as you close in on it boom you start to see particles and you start to see a whole new world of contraction evaporation let's see comparing this one has more tang oil it's more yellowy this is more gray whitish stony edges look at that rubbly 
megalithic stone edge type natural aging look at the the your pot i mean it's uh to to shrink shrinkage oh, i saw a piece of crystal in the knee of the buddha there on the shoulder to our left it's gone out of sight now on the shoulder some dots of bread camping pet amulet in the face there is pieces of hinsilati kun bailan oh, this is very well mixed whoever mixed the bowl of clay in this particular pressing session because you're talking of days and weeks of pressing look at that particles inside the the sum the the arch the ridge of the arch you can see how it bulges gets thinner and thicker and has bulges that's the natural contraction over the ages you can even look at the first one the pimjarot sum you can see the bulges look how it's bulging apart from the noticing the moon sun particles within and there you can see the bang the white powder once again just saw it around the edge of the Buddha so from a distance you have one effect and from a grand magnification scale is where you really start to see how you know when the pot of clay is look at that you see this one's older you see one it's one is older than the other but they're both I call them second era so they might be 15 years apart or 20 years apart the second era is when the Changsip Mu artisans made the block presses look inside there the Hintzi Latikun inside the bulging wobbly arch there so hard and fossilized and contracted yeah and the little particles on the surface around between the arch and the Buddha on the crackly flat surface all the different tonalities you see that the tip of the instrument I'm using them showing the bulge how it has contracted you cannot fake this kind of contraction and aging and mix the moon sand to look exactly the same the effects are different and as I said when the pot of clay is finished I interrupted myself as we were looking at the edge and this Hinsi Lati Kun inside the look at that ah, is that when the pot of clay is finished they make a new mixture look at that you can see the ingredients inside you can see now you come in really close and there you can see things you didn't see before particles bits of crystal that black bit is probably just a bit of blue you have to blow on the amulet. You should actually have a blowing instrument to blow air on. In case you've had in a velvet case, they'll have little pieces, strands of the velvet. You have to look at the amulet to clean that up. Ah. So looking at these pieces, you can see all different kinds of ingredients inside. Which you don't see at first sight. If you notice the more meditation the more concentration and the closer you look and not just the closer the longer you look up close you start to see it's like picking mushrooms if you've ever been picking mushrooms in the forest uh, it might take you an hour to see one but once you see the first one you see hundreds Okay, look at this fossilized effect and look at the coloration the caves the ridges look for the knife cut angled knife cut lines hidden within because of the contraction yeah. but and think about how how one would replicate this kind of aged stone and if it's possible to create replicate these ingredients with this effect and this natural aging process I mean even touching a real one in the hand the texture on the fingers already tells you something yeah. but what a lot of people don't look at with something like the Kang is they'll say oh not real it not uh, doesn't reach his era is real it doesn't mean fake it means it was made after he died um, a lot of people, big males know it all. I don't know it all, but I I teach according to how I think. And 
I listen to anybody, so I don't have a teacher. I, everything and everybody and every book and every piece of information and every amulet is my teacher. And so um, you can see angled sliced lines here again. You can see and the contraction and we're at a distance so you don't see the contraction so much but you can see it's full of caves. It's fossilized. You don't just don't see how fossilized it is until if we magnified, went back to put the lens on and magnified it again. Because this is just an iPhone 5 camera, an 8 megapixel camera. Right? Oh, well it's upscaled to HD. So when you look at from this distance, you can already see. Look how old contracted that is. Yeah. But another thing I say often in almost every video I make about Prasomne Patrakan, or Gejayo, from Somnito, from Bangkun, from Gejayo, what Patrakan, of this age, and made amulets hand pressed. You keep looking inside while I'm talking. You look for particles, look for the knife marks, look for the contractions, the caves, the fossilized effect, yeah. Um, but one thing uh, I do like to say is that uh, there are three eras, three main eras officially. You can see these knife marks, angular, diagonal, you can see as the contraction has formed, it's formed along with the diagonal lines. And he's changed direction on the end here and gone to cut the other way for some reason. You can actually see the person who cut it, he cut it. He got nearly to the end of the amulet and he probably had to turn around and then cut it from the other side because he was left-handed maybe or something. And so there you go, the Pim Gejarotsum, second era. And Pim again, Talutsum, this one, second era. But the Ketalutsum and the Jerotsum are, um, they're separated by a decade or two. As to the first era, there's a completely different effect, which you will see because these are Pim Yai. But this video, um, I was getting tired and I decided to stop. I say, what a shame, I wanted to show you these Pim Chedi, these ones. <laughs> because it's a third era and a first era. The ones next to them are perhaps somebody back into your... But uh, then, so we got round to looking at, this is my favourite amulet and I wouldn't sell it to anybody. I'd think about it for thirty thousand dollars. Otherwise, uh, and, I, and that doesn't mean I'd sell it. That's a Pim Chedi from the first era. And just looking at it at a distance here, you can see that that really looks like a megalith. You can see the difference. The other two we looked at are smoother. You just look how contracted and how mega megalith stone fossil like this looks. Yeah. You can just see at a distance on an Eiffel Park. Just look at the back, even and the sides. It's like looks like the stones you see in in, in the Yorkshire Dales in the sheep fields that they built hundreds of years ago with old stones. It's like a megalith. So we come in now with the lens. I just look at the content of Mozart, banana seed, and you can see the bang, uh, koi between the arms, always in the cavities between the body and the arms, you will find this powder arising, the finer powders rising up through the rougher substances being pushed up as the water evaporates back into the atmosphere. And look at this bulging arch with very bulgy and irregular with so many different pieces. It's like it's like crazy paving of Hinsiladi Kun look at I saw a little red a bead of Gamping Pet Amulet just now in one of the legs on the dais. You can see the blue koi, the bang, the pongputakun, the powder forming around cavities between the arms and the legs, the legs and the dais. 
contract. Look at the contractions, the natural contractions. You think they're chips, they're not, they're contractions. They're not chips in the arch. There are contractions, the cracks and, uh, and holes, they're contracting. And if you see the hands here, they're joined together, bulging. Actually, there's a piece of hinsilati kun in the middle blocking it, but it's always like a pair of joined, blurred hands, but an authentic somnipatakang. Actually, if you look at it long enough, you will kind of imagine the thumb going over and the palm of his right hand to our left going under the back of his left hand and the thumb of his right hand to our left going over the thumb of his of the Buddha's left hand to our right. So there's a slight insinuation of um, the folded meditating hands even though actually it's just a bulge but it's a very 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 fine detail that uh, on crew uh, uh, which is not that I believe in the principles of the Tapajan but uh, at least they preserve the the models they know but that doesn't mean the models or the things they don't know don't exist and they limit and, and they prevent things that do exist from existing and that's why I'm not into them but the things they know they do know well but they just stick to what they know and don't go outside that barrier so they would look for that insinuation of hands and on this Pim Chedi I'm sure if I went to the Tapaj and I haven't done them thought about it because uh, you see boy Tapajan collects some debts. <laughs> he was on TV the other day doing a live with uh, Bong Supan, another famous amulet Tapajan trader. Look at that black piece of that's banana seed. And in Silati Kun. Because he used bananas to mix in to make the, the, the creamy. And look in the arm, there was a piece of red camping pet amulet in there. And here on the base, you can see to the left, bottom left of the screen going away. And this is absolutely first era. So uh, Somnitho began officially documented as may start releasing some debt around the year 2355 plus, 55 onwards. So this is about 2355 plus and it's not a Luang Wijan because Luang Wijan artisan made the pork presses. There's another piece of banana seed or maybe pata from the camping pet amulets. And the rear of this uh, amulet really has uh, easily visible almost every single ingredient you need to find to authenticate the black banana seed, the bailan powders, the gapma, the, 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 the areca nut um, stains from chewed areca nut, um, the hinsilati kun, little black dots and red pieces of clay from Prat Gamping Pet, ancient Prat Group amulets within there, also one and the dark piece pieces is Dinpong, Dinpong, uh, uh, as marsh earth, a special kind. And you have Rusi chalks in there, and the, the ingredients are numerous. They're numerous. So I take about um, five, six, seven ingredients that I know very well how to recognize, and I'll fixate myself on them because there's a piece of Pratt Camping Pet. That is most definite. You can see it's got black dots in it, just like a Prat Pong Supan or a Nang Paya, uh, or even a Kun Pen Bang Krang, yeah? You can see, you know, the red clay Prat Grot burial hiding place amulets. Somdet Tho mixed them in with his Prat Somdet. And there's a really nice chunk of one. You very rarely see a big chunk like that. You see very traces of them. And that's a that's a, that's a hundred percent evidence for me. There's a piece of a seven hundred to a thousand year old amulet that was broken up and mixed in with the moon sand clay, poking out, waving at me, saying this was made by Somdet Papudajanto from Rangsi Watakanko Sitaram. One hundred percent nenon nenon means sure, absolutely sure. That is. For sure, Prat Camping Pet Asa Yuone, Nermun San, Henman Murpin Kong, Nang Paya, Pen Kong, Pong Supan, 
นะเหมือนคุมแผนบางกลางอ่ะนะจุดดำอยู่ในนั้นเป็นประทาดนะเป็นดินไทยแดงแดงแล้วเป็นเผาดินเผานะผักโกรกเหมือนพวกผักโกรกว่าภาษีมหาธาตุผักกุกรรมเพ่งเพชรเป็นที่สมเด็จตัวเลยครัวโตได้ผสมบทอยู่ในมวลสารพระครัวโตอ่าพระจันทร์แสงครัวแสงและครัวโตครัวแสงอาจารย์แสงอันครัวโตอาจารย์สมเด็จพระพุทธเจ้าโตเวิร์กทุกันละทูแมงตะมวลสารพระตุพระสมเด็จ because they found the tamra on t u d o n they found the that's another piece you see of the gumpek pet amulet uh, here we see the density of this and the fossilization of this amulet Is it's not really going to condense or get any harder because all the moisture is gone now. So I think this is kind of it's reached its almost reached its final stage. There's nothing less left to um, no moisture left to escape. I don't think in this. So this is I call fully cured. First year fossilized, yeah. and the presence of those pieces of p r a t c a m p i n g pit amulet just for me really take the biscuit. And as you can see, you don't see the knife marks. Why don't you see the knife marks? Because it's a first era, and as I said, the block presses from the artisan. c h a n g l o n g w i j a n and the other c h a n g s i p m u artisans was made in the second era, whereas s o m d e t t o made his own block presses and made his own s o m d e t s and he used to put them in a bath in his kuti in the arm um, bowl and uh, make them himself. He made his own block presses, handmade, and so on. Yeah. So he might have just smoothed it off with his finger, sat alone in his guti. Guti means hot. Yeah. So there you go. Or he might have used a knife or a cutter or something, but not in the typical way that people are doing it when they've got a hundred in front of them and they want to do it quickly. His assistance. Uh, here's a back face again, and I think I shall. Shut my mouth and let you look at the particles, and see if you can notice the points I've mentioned. Ah, this green piece—that is not Monsan. That's called the j a k t a l a p The it's from a stainless steel casing. If you leave an a m b i e n t a long time in stainless steel casing and take it out, the old way of casing they used to use a drop. Glue, or sometimes even green rubber, but that comes from the drop of glue, I believe. They put a tiny drop just to stop the amulet wobbling about once it's encased. So uh, sometimes you see a bit of green like this on the amulet, and it means um, you would call that dead jagdala. So if you ever see a p r a t s o m dead of some dead p a b u r i j a n t o that has a little green stain on it, that's because it's been encased for many years and worn by somebody. Go again. The other piece of prat g a m p i n g pet. If you take a prat g u p a n g k r a n g or a prat p o n g s u p a n m a p r a s i m a h a t a a 700 year old amulet, and look at it. The surface. It's exactly like the, this red piece we were just looking at. And you can see h i n s i l a t i k u n the cracks, the caves, and the, the rivers. And here you can see little dimples. It looks shiny, it looks wet, doesn't it? But that's because it's so hardened. And just look at these cracks that have formed contraction. Just look at that. You see the topology again. It's like mountains and rivers. It's like the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Look at the particles. That was another bit of green from the casing. Ah, uh, look at these. Now I really, I managed to zoom the camera. I did this on the iPhone 5, but the problem was I didn't use the camera app. It would be much clearer. I used the Facebook app with the Facebook camera, which, when you try to zoom, works one in ten. There's that piece of g a m p i n g pet amulet again. Yeah, I let myself as I'm making this narrative on top. 
because everything I spoke when I recorded this was lost. Thanks, Facebook. It was actually a better teaching than the, the speech I'm giving now, the narrative. You see, this yellowy effect is because of the high presence of tang oil, number tang yo. You see the powder in there as well, the putakun powder. Look as hard as you can there, red, there a piece of green, it jag that up from the casing. Look in the hole, see the white powder of the Pulakai, Pong Pulakun. I mean, how are you going to fake this natural aging? You're going to take some fake white dust and spray it. It's going to be even, not uneven. And that's why I said the backs of amulets, when you have mildew, you know, if you have a rash on you, it's not uniform. You might have 10 spots on your chest and only a few on your wrist. Yeah, It's the same with Prats Omnit Watrakang. That's what I forgot to say. I started to talk before and I forgot. Is that there are no two Prats Omnit Watrakang that look the same. Or get to your... There are no two that look the same because anything from 100 to 200 years, <laughs> amulet. Uh, kept in different conditions, different block presses, pressed by different people assisting whether they were tired or not, their hand was strong or not, uh, whether they ran out of clay and made a new batch of clay so the color of the, the tone of the clay intensified or got softer, or whether some clay had a lot of these ingredients like this piece here, a patat you can see, which we didn't notice at first in the surface next to the shoulder of the Buddha. And at this magnification, you start to see all of the things which you didn't see yet. Even though we've already examined this amulet for quite some minutes now. Yeah, magnified, but not as much as this. Silati Kun. That's my favorite ingredient, by the way. That's why I keep saying it. Because I know it's the same with Kyo Hanuman, which means Hanuman's fangs. It's a quartz type substance, and I believe it has very high magical qualities. And it's very difficult to get hold of. Actually, it's not quartz, it's Hinsilatiko. Uh, I wouldn't even know it to get it. I know how to get Silanam, but that's a different stuff. That is also black, looks like black, shiny. Here we can see the Prakhoi, the, the powder, the fine powders pushed up to the surface in the armpit. Look at the crack in the arm. Look at this powder forming being pushed up through the surface. And you can see the particles of red in the, in, in the legs of the Buddha as it came into focus a second ago. But this powder, you take a knife or a fingernail and try and scrape that off. It looks like you could brush it off. You can't. It's completely affixed. It's very, 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 very stuck on there. And you notice as it leaves the cavities, away from what I call caves and cavities, it's only around the arms and then it clears out. Huh? So this is how it forms. The Pongputakun and the Peng. Uh, the blue koi, the seashell powder is so fine. You see, on the torso, being pushed up through. This is how they form. Because as the moisture is released through evaporation within the clay and the clay dries, the finer powders get pushed up out of the center and the uh, other ingredients stay where they are, more or less. Yeah. On the deck, you can see some of them have very, very thin deck, almost invisible. This is the Jarotsum, the bump into the arch, not the Talotsum, the pierce the arch first. First, uh, Pinchedi, uh, the second two amulets we took. This is mine, this is my amulet because it was the first, first era amulet I managed to find. And, uh, there's a, quite a lot of Pratsomnip Badrakang originals of Somnip though from 2nd era and uh, still a lot from 3rd era, still easy to find. 
some if you look hard enough second era much harder to find first era like this usually the only place you're gonna see them is in the hands of the tapa gen auctioneers you know, the high-end marketplace oh, the famous tapa gen guys who sell to millionaires so boy tapa gen the other day i was watching him with a live tv so uh a customer had come to sell a Sumde Batakang of this quality. Actually, it wasn't even as nice as this, to be honest. And he claimed that he was buying it for 10 million baht, which is about $350,000. And it was no way as nice as this. So, um, actually, I, don't, I, I really want to keep this amulet. But if I ever find myself in Bangkok wearing it somewhere near those guys, I would like to go and see, just to see if it's true that if the movie they made that they were buying really was. Because I don't believe that these guys pay 10 million baht for a real Pratsamdip Madrakang. It's just so that I've just bought... What he's done is taken one of his own. He said the owner selling he doesn't want to be known. Look at the back here, how, how, how old that fossilized that is. Uh, I mean, this is a pass. This is, passes the test. 100%. Pim Chedi Wadrakang, Yuk Reg, first era. And so if the one that wasn't as beautiful, he paid 10 million for it. And you see, uh, would he give me for mine? No, he wouldn't, because he doesn't pay 10 million. It was a scam, just so that somebody will come and offer him 20 for one that he can't actually sell that's why you shouldn't go to Tapa Jan because they'll tell you your stuff is fake so these are Pimchidi the one on the left is a third era and you can see it's not as crackled and look it's thicker because Prats of Nipwadakang are actually thin yeah the first and second era are slim yeah the edges when you examine the edges, they're slim, and you'll see the contraction. Secondary, you'll see fossilized contraction. And this one on the right here, my Pim Chedi, uh, first era, you'll see the most contraction of fossilization. This one on the uh, the one to the left, this one I'm touching, has had lacquer, I believe, and cleaned, but it's much younger. And because it's thicker, it's third era, yeah, it's third era. So this is a first era Pim Chedi slipped. This is a first, I keep slipping off camera, I'm sorry. This is a first era Pim Chedi. Wadra Kang, Sobbe Wadra Kang Pim Chedi. You can see, it's like rubble, it's like a megalith. Yeah, uh, two, three, five plus BE. Yeah, which would make uh, two, four, two, four, it makes it 200 years old. Already, time has passed so much that now we can talk about some of those first year amulets as not being one and a half centuries years old, which they always talk about the third era. We can talk about them being two centuries old, to be honest. And though this will be third era you can see much less contraction you have you can see the Pratt Gamping pit the red in there you have Muan San probably use broken amulets from the first two eras as well but the, why is this thicker the arch is thicker and the legs and the arms everything is thicker and I think this is because the first ones of course some did though the second era Changlong Wijan, Changlong Wijit, Changlong Sitikan, the artisans of the, the royal artisans. You see, I'm pointing at the, the details. Um, they're very thin. I'm, I'm pointing about how the details are very thin on the amulet. And whereas on this one, or on the other one, I see it, arch. On the other one, they're thicker. Not the one I'm touching now this one they're thicker and they don't have this if you take it under the eye loop very closely you will see 
more aging. So I would say the one to the left is 2408. That Pimya in the middle is second era. It's a different Pim, but I'm to show. So the one on the left is third era. And it was probably thicker because they used, made a block press by, you know how you make a, a presser, a, a use Play Doh to press a key, copy a key? They do the same thing to make a new block press. But when you make a new block press from an old block press, or you take an original amulet and then put clay around it to make the mother block press, the details will be thicker than the original. Which is why the third era are not as highly detailed as the second era. Because the second era is when Tang Lung, Wichan and the other artisans made the block presses which will have been reused or broken ones will have made a new block press to, by using an original from the second era yeah, to make a new block press resulting in, le in, in a more thick and less uh, filigrane detail whereas the first era uh, is in a world of its own yeah. uh, and also the, the arch on the right side touches the edge and prime I'm going up camera I'm very sorry touches the frame just like Lung Wijan Tang Lung Wijan but I don't believe that is Lung Wijan I believe that is some little make because first era as you can just see a completely different era between the three amulets when you examine them and what I'm doing here with the ruler is you see it doesn't meet in the middle when I follow the dace, the line of the dace, it doesn't meet the center of the arch that's a pimyai no? whereas if it meets the center of the arch it is a pimchedi and this one is a pimyai because it doesn't meet in the center of the arch. Whereas with the Pim Chidi, if you take a ruler and follow the taper of the dace, the base of the Buddha, you will see that it meets right in the middle in a triangle shape, making it a Pim Chidi. Chidi. And when it doesn't meet in the middle with these those two, a Pim Yai. Yeah? So that's how to distinguish between a Somdet Pim Patanyai and a Somdet Pim Chedi. This one is a Somdet Patrakang, uh, but it is Nirpun Pet. And it might actually... I will talk about that on another day. And these Somdet Get Chayo and Somdet Wat Bangkun Pom Pim Sendai Gruk Gao from the Big Chedi, the old Gruk from Somnet Do, which was found when they opened the Chedi Stupa burial chamber in 2500. This is also a Pim Sendai of Somnet Do, but it's not from Bangkun Prom. You see, it has no mildew stains or um, residue on it. It's clean. That's because it was released at Wadrakan. And this is one of the rarest and less known amulets of Somnet Do, the Pim Tukata, which looks like amulets from Wat Plap and also uh, Lumpu Pulak. Of Wat Gingao. Lumbu Pulak Wat Gingao was actually the first, uh, 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 one of the first top apprentices of Somdet Paputajanto Pomrangsi of Wat Rakang anyway. But this is in the Bangkum Prom set, I believe. I believe it to be much earlier. And uh, it's from Somdet though, and it's called the Pim Tukata. And if you notice the Moon San and the look and the design, uh, you can see the influence of Ajahn Sang, who was the crew Ajahn of Somnet Paputichanto and accomplice, who they traveled together on Tudong and developed the Wicca. And the Wicca of making powders of Wat Plap comes from Ajahn Sang or Krua Sang, that's his nickname. And Krua To also have this Wicca, and that's why it's looking similar to Wat Plap amulets or the amulets of Lung Pu Puak of Wat King Kao because they're related because Lung Pu Puak of Wat King Kao learned from Somdetto 
And the amulets of Wat Plap come from the Vita of Ajahn Sang, who was the uh, close companion and Puba Ajahn of Sombe Paputa Janto Pomrangsi Vatrakanko Sitaram. So this is such a rare amulet. That's mine. You're not having it. I'm keeping it. And I'll be making a video about this one when I have completed my studies and read and studied everything what there is to find about it and see the conflicts and make my own conclusions and comments on it. What's for sure is it's in Nurpun Ped and uh, it's probably made for handing out just like the white one I showed you which I will show on another day too Nurpun Ped, very very popular uh, usually made for civil servants for handing out to civil servants so there you go my two favorite amulets these two are for me unless boy or anybody at the top of them want to give me how much was that $350,000 for it okay I'll find another one because I've got the eyes to find them but that Pim TD and that Pim Tukata to be quite honest and these kids are yours I shall be doing you see they look different they're both authentic I will be explaining the difference why the difference and just showing you both of them and the other two the, the Pim Sendai Bangkun Prom and the Pim Sendai Wadrakang I will be showing And so there you go, that was showing you some of the Somdets. There's another, some others on the top right, you can see the Pratnon, the Sleeping Buddha, and the white Somdet on the top, another day. Ajahn Spencer for Amulets TV, signing off.